Hi there, and thanks for tuning into episode 15 of our IGTV Black Box series. My name is Cecilia, and today I'm catching up with Rosanna Purcell, a graduate of our professional actor training program at GSA. Rosanna, thank you so much for coming in to say hi to us today. No How are you? Good, good. Feeling. Good. Um, can you give us a brief synopsis of what you've been up to since graduating back in 2012? Back in 2012. Uh, yeah, so seven years ago, uh, it feels like yesterday. Um, so I've been lucky enough to be uh, kind of working pretty consistently um, in Ireland, um, majoritively in theatre really. Um, I've done, yeah, like different fringe shows and other big, bigger scale professional, massive budget stuff and uh, uh, I'm starting to kind of get more into film and television mm. as well, which has been great um, in the last two or three years. That's kind of happening more and more, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, when I kind of step back and look at the bigger picture, it feels like it's, at times it can feel like a struggle and that of you're course. you're getting nowhere. But when I kind yeah. of step back and get a bit of perspective, I can see that it, it is going in, you know, it's one rung at a time in the right direction. I didn't skyrocket out of um, the Gaiety School, but it has been uh, consist consistently um, that my career is kind of going in the direction I the wanted right to direction. go, which is great. Um, you've just finished up the Irish professional premiere of Midsummer yeah. at Project Arts Centre. Um, now, I think it's fair to say that this play turns um, the conventional love story on its head. Yeah. Um, so how do you think um, Irish audiences took from this or what do they take from this and was it special for you to like bring it to an Irish audience? Massively special, yeah, I think it, it's definitely up there in the highlights of my career so far. It was, um, I felt a huge growth in my craft. I felt, uh, and I was just working with incredible people, um, a really brilliant team. So it's a really, it's really close to my heart, that one. Um, and I think Irish audiences were just instantly able to connect to it because it's written so brilliantly. It's written by David Gregg, who's probably one of the top 10 best living playwrights yeah. at the moment. He's yeah. a Scottish writer and he's written things like Outlying Islands and Victoria and The Architect. He's a fantastic mm. writer. So the script itself is just so dense and so rich. And it's, um, it was funny afterwards because when, when I was chatting to people who came in to see it, um, what, what feels like a simple love story um, told in a really fun way, the, the text is actually quite complex and dense. So it's written as a monologue. And we then as a team had to sit down and decide uh, well, Bob should be saying this and Helena should be saying nice. this and we should say this together because this works together. And it's also a play with songs, so um, there was singing and we were playing instruments as well. So the complex and the form of it just really served into, really served into getting the richness of what is a gorgeous love story um, out to the front, you know. So I think audiences were able to kind of, it's a universal love yeah, story, yeah. but I think the manner in which it was told was quite topsy-turvy and unconventional. Yeah. Um, but I think the dexterity in it and the the virtuosity of the piece really afforded it. it it comes right out to the audience it's it's a gift it's a it's a gift of a play i loved it nice. <laughs> it was brilliant um, and from one show into the other you're just about to enter another summer performing in coppers the musical yeah. which had an incredible success it did, um, yeah, last yeah. year um, can you tell us a bit about the show for those who may not have caught it last year and your character yeah so um i think when i was saying in, in the first question about uh you know the bigger budget stuff i think that yeah. definitely coppers was like a step into a world of like wow this is a big show and i've never done something to that scale before and it was really exciting um so it's written by paul howard who is internationally famous at this point for yeah. his ross o'carroll yeah. kelly work and uh, he's just written a really clever funny script where a girl, um, Nolene Nigarls, who I play from Kerry, her dream is to work for the claims department in the VHI. And she follows, of course it is. <laughs> and she's from Cahir Savine and she moves to Dublin and leaves behind her fiance, Mossy. Uh, and uh, she moves into a bed sit in Harcourt Street and one night there's music playing too loudly across the road. So she goes over to tell them to turn it down as you do, and she ends up wandering into coppers and literally bumps into the captain of the Dublin football team <laughs> played by Johnny Ward. And uh, from there, it's like Romeo and Juliet yes. set in Dublin. And it's just, it's so funny because I think Paul has an incredible ability to allow Irish audiences to sit back and just, just laugh at the nonsense that yeah. goes on. Do you know that like 
that we can set a musical in a nightclub that has just become an institution yes. because of cheesy music and like getting the shift on the dance floor <laughs> that we can all just like have a great time, <laughs> great time yeah. and I re what I really loved was that just the buzz the audiences were yeah. getting from it that like people were really having a good time at the show um, and also their ticket was was you get free entrance into the I nightclub mean, after it's a win -win so win -win it's situation. a win -win situation so yeah it's, it's it's really fun to perform if you could play another character in the show Ooh. who would it be if they were if they were open to gender bending maybe i'd love to give mossy a go nice. uh, he's just it's just so funny he's this like really backwards kerry young fella but at this while saying that i wouldn't be able to do it justice because stephen o'leary who's actually a graduate of the gaiety school as well has made that part into something absolutely iconic he's a brilliant actor and the hardest part i found of the rehearsal process last year was not laughing at stephen because he's <laughs> so funny and when you meet him in, 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 real, in life, real life, yeah, yeah. he's just so quiet and such a gentleman of a guy. And then he just explodes on stage and he's made that character just wonderful. Like he's, he's a show stealer, he's brilliant. Well, there's two, two grads of ours that we're very proud of. Yeah. Um, our, our, speaking of grads, our full-time students are about to open their graduation play Below Below in, next week in Smock Alley Theatre. Yeah. What advice would you give them at this time with one week to go? Um, trust the brilliant team that you have. Fanula Geyers is a fantastic writer, probably one of the most, uh, like, and Raymond Keane, two really interesting artists in Ireland at the moment. So mm -hmm. you already get to go forward into the professional world yeah. saying I've worked with Fanula and I've worked with Raymond. Yeah. That's very exciting. And enjoy, work, uh, like this could be the last time you set, set foot on stage with your classmates um, and really enjoy that and support each other. Um, it can feel like a funny time because it's between showcase and graduation um, but I think going forward remember that other people's opportunities have nothing to do with you and uh, personally speaking it's uh, you know hard work is the most satisfying yeah. form of yeah. success that yeah. it is an industry where there are things like you know, uh, hype and favouritism and all that kind of silly stuff, but let that wash over you and if you keep working hard, um, no one can take that away from you or undermine it and remember that the people that you've been through the battlefield with in the Gaiety, you'll remember these days, you'll remember your two years forever and it may seem, it may seem like a really intense time, but then with given a little bit of time, you'll realise, you'll start remembering things of like, oh, I. I know how to do that now and I know I, I remember learning this in training and even things like just being on time <laughs> like that's always a thing I attribute to being in the gate because I'm like I'll always be on time now because our tutors will love it. you for saying <laughs> this <laughs> but it's true and it, it was a thing of like at, at the time it feels frustrating because you're like the bus was late it's not my fault yeah. but you'll it, you'll take it forward and you'll be like, I can't be, I can't be mm -hmm. late for an audition, they won't mm -hmm. wait for me, I can't be late for rehearsals, I'll get into trouble, you know? Yeah. And, you know, if you're sick, you need a doctor's note, You because you, you, it's not a job that you yeah. can get sick on. Yeah. All, all yeah. those little things really stand to reason, and especially, I mean, everyone will take forward manifesto. I, I did massively, I know I did, that it was a skill that I never realised I was capable of, of making my own work, and I got to do it two years ago. I wrote my own show, Test Copy, and I, like I want, I will do it again. I'm writing again a second play, so the, the gaiety will just fill you with loads of skills that will just be available to you as you go forward. So avail of them and and embrace it all. Well, that is beautiful, beautiful <laughs> advice, Razan. It was great to catch up with you, and thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Um, have a fantastic summer and run with. Will do. Coffers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>